hello guys now in this tutorial we will see about the static schedule class okay now um, all this explanation which I gave in the previous tutorial is about the static class actually okay now let's go look with a simpler example to understand what's happening now static schedule class is the default schedule class for the parallel loop parallel to loop okay what it does is that it it uh, assigns a chunk size it finds the chunk size or assigns the chunk size that we give okay and and using that it divides the overall uh, workload into manageable small chunks maps each chunk to a particular thread based on the thread order thread order and then execute and then let the threads execute them in their own manner okay now the way it works is as follows even if you don't write schedule static by default the parallel do loop, parallel do construct will take st static as it is so let's run the run the default one okay now here let's look at the results if we run this this is the shell script I wrote to run this program if you look at it let's see the results now uh, iterations 0 1 and 2 are done by thread 0 okay iterations 3 4 and 5 are done by thread 1 iterations 6 7 and 6 7 8 are done by thread 2 whereas iteration 9 10 and 11 are done by thread 3 okay now in this example uh, what you'd notice this the chunk size is not determined it's not fixed so we're, we're not considering the schedule class with any chunk size so what happens is that uh, the schedule class automatically finds the uh, lo logical chunk size so that uh, the all the threads have equal workload so here the logical work, work, uh, chunk size is 3 because there are 12 iterations and 4 threads so e each thread handles 3 iterations so that's a logical so it finds as it is and then using that number it divides the total chunks total uh, uh, job into that many so we have 4 threads so 4 chunks logical and each chunk has been allocated to 1 thread each chunk has been done by one thread so what it follows is that the first chunk goes to thread 0 second chunk goes to thread 1 third chunk goes to thread 2 fourth chunk goes to thread 3 like that okay like that it goes on it follows so what you call as the thread order or the round robin order the mapping whereas execution they just happen haphazardly so if I were to run so if I were to run this again if you look at it now this is a very perfect case wherein the thread order and the execution order is exactly the same Ex thread order and the execution order is the same okay so thread 1 thread 0 act was active and then thread 1 and then thread 2 thread 3 everything was fine now let's look at a k uh, let's run this again um, same thread order come on you gotta be serious seriously okay now uh, now it's different now it's different you see here in this example the thread order is a bit different that's what I wanted the execution thread order is different so if you look at it iteration 0 and iteration 1 and 2 are done by thread 0 and then iteration 3 4 5 are done by thread 1 then by th and then 5 uh, 6 7 8 are done by thread 2 9 10 11 are done by thread 3 now if you look at it in the execute as far as the execution order is concerned iteration and the thread 1 was active for one instance okay and before thread uh, sorry thread 0 was active for one instance and before it could finish thread iterations uh, before it got a chance to print iterations 2 and 3 uh, iterations 2 and 3 set it 1 and 2 thread 1 got the chance and it finished its, uh, its iterations to 3 4 5 and then gave the job to 6 7 and then let the let iteration 2 sorry th thread 2 became active after 1 and it did, it did iteration 6 7 8 and then thread 3 became active and it did iterations 9 10 and 11 and then gave chance for iterations I mean thread 0 to finish iterations 1 and 2 okay so if you look at it the execution order is different from the allocation order and in the allocation order does not follow the map uh, allocation order obeys the mapping though the chunk uh, it goes like the chunk 1 is done it's what happens here is that th this is schedule already made the schedule is automatically made it makes that the chunk 1 goes to thread 1 chunk 2 goes to thread 2 like that and so on it, it's automatically made and when the chunks execute when the chunk when the threads get executed threads run they just execute the chunks that, that is assigned to them pre-assigned to them kind of okay that's the basic thing okay this this I would I would explain this with this example 
let's say the x-axis be the number of iterations you have to finish and then this and then let's say we let's say we have a we have a perfect uh, chunk size perfect chunk size condition like the uh, like in this case where the ch perfect chunk size is 3 in this case what happens is that the first one fourth of the job of the total number of iterations is done by thread 1 the second half I mean second one second quarter is done by thread 2 the third quarter is done by thread 3 and the fourth quarter is done by thread 4 so if you look at it the job is evenly spread di distributed among all the iterations now I mean the uh, number all the uh, workload is sa same for all the threads now let's mess things up and uh, give give it some trouble let's say we put something like four iterations per thread now clearly if you put like four iterations per thread uh, with this chunk size being four clearly only three threads will be active okay watch so if I run this there you go each chunk has a chunk size of four right now because we set the chunk size to be four over here we set the chunk size to be four away so each thread has uh, the chunk size to be four so iteration uh, thread zero has iterations was 0, 1, 2, and 3. So this is clearly one chunk. And then iteration 4, 5, 6, 7 is clearly another chunk is done by thread 1. And then so iteration 8, 9, 10, and 11 are done by thread 2. Okay. As a consequence, since the number of threads is, sorry, since the um, chunk size is 4, okay, uh, um, when you divide the total number of jobs into, e uh, into chunk sizes of 4, okay, you don't have a you don't have a fourth chunk as a consequence you thread three even though it's available it's not being used suppose let's mess this thing by setting uh, the total number of iterations to be 14 the static chunk size to be 4 and if you run this there you have it just like the previous example except that la last uh, final two iterations it iteration 12 and 13 which became now are allocated to chunk 3 now now I would explain this. Uh, I would explain this scenario with this uh, with this diagram over here. Now, if we have a chunk chunk size which is greater than the idealized chunk size, or if there's a small overflow or something like that, something like that, what happens is as follows: a majority of the uh, since uh, the workload does not become equal, is that and does not become equal, and as a consequence, each thread takes more more number of iterations than the ideal one as a consequence sometimes the threads sometimes th the threads might take more job thread uh, so here t1 here t1 takes more job over here whereas t2 takes even equally the same job equally the same amount of job but when t1 and t2 are over the last chunk that remains is t uh, is small and it's even smaller than the allocated chunk size chunk size for t3 so when t3 finishes t4 has nothing to do okay or else or else or, or else it might be too small for something to do suppose if t3 has even more bigger chunk size and a chunk size and chunk size such that each t1 t2 t3 have completed the profit chunk size which is set by here then what it remains will be much smaller and that will be done by t4 like that okay now let's go for a case wherein chunk size is smaller than the ideal chunk size so the, here the ideal chunk size is uh, let's back, set, uh, come back to the same example here the ideal chunk size is 3 so if you set the chunk size to be 2 now we'll have 6 chunks right so if you look at this example uh, now thread 2 thread 0 and thread 1 over here will have two more will execute two more chunks watch as expected now now because of chunk size over here chunk size over here uh, chunk size is 2 there are 12 iterations though so we expect 6 chunks so first chunk is iteration 0 1 1 done by thread, thread 0 and then second chunk is 2 and 3 iteration 2 and 3 done by thread 1 third chunk is iteration 4 and 5 done by thread 2 fifth chunk is iteration 6 and 7 done uh, sorry fourth chunk fourth iteration is iteration 6 and 7 done by thread 3 and then fifth iteration since the t1 t2 3 3 and t4 are over the fifth iteration is done by iteration 8 fifth iteration 8 and 9 is done by uh, thread thread 0 again and then the final iteration iteration 
10 and 11 which is I, which is the sixth chunk is done by thread 1 suppose let's say there's another chunk okay other chunk let's say so instead of 12 let's keep it 14 okay now if this being the case watch the last chunk uh, more or less the last chunk will be uh, will be allocated to thread will be allocated to thread 2 okay uh, more or less something more or less similar to what we saw last time just a little addition so this is how it goes this is how it goes in the case wherein you have a smaller thread size smaller chunk size than the ideal chunk size you might anticipate the job gets <laughs> the job gets allocated to each thread in this order small chunks get allocated to each thread in this order and still if there's a lot more jobs left the same pro procedure the same procedure is followed and they go on and go on go on and on until uh, all the jobs all the chunks have been allocated to all threads so that is how this is how the allocation goes by and let's look at the thread order let's say when allocate when uh, working with this example over here let the random thread order that came is 1 1 3 4 2 2 4 and 3 okay random thread order that came out to be like this when you execute the thread order might be different so this is just an example so keep in, keep that in mind so if that being the case thread 1 gets active first and it it it, it, it completes chunk 1 and then thread 1 becomes active again so here instead of doing thread 2 it follows the routine and does ch I mean, instead of doing chunk 2 it follows the routine de defi defined on the top and it, it does chunk 5 and then chunk 3 becomes active sorry thread 3 becomes active and thread 3 does chunk 3 and then thread 4 becomes active and thread 4 does chunk 4 okay and then here comes uh, and then thread 2 becomes active it does chunk 2 and then thread 2 becomes active again because of this thread order and instead of doing others it does chunk 6 and then th thread 4 becomes active it does uh, chunk 8 and then thread 3 becomes active it does chunk 7 fair enough now this is how this is how it goes this is the full fledged explanation of how a static clause work okay if you have a chunk size greater than the ideal chunk size then some of the threads might have uh, might 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 be working with smaller uh, chunks uh, smaller chunk sizes so as a consequence the work work share on them will be smaller work share on them will be smaller and if you're working with uh, chunk size much smaller than the ideal chunk size then uh, though the the threads will have multiple chunks to be working working with and uh, usually the ch usually the thread usually the threads in the uh, high usually the, the threads uh, the f uh, usually the threads which are in the higher order not higher order which are in the ascending order they'll have the more they have more number of jobs if the thread number is chunk size is lesser okay static threads uh, go in such a manner that the threads on the top like say t1 t2 t3 t4 that ones on the top they get the more number of jobs to work with okay hope you guys understood this now in the next example we'll work with um, uh, dynamic sh dynamic uh, schedule classes